What's going on internet? IG here again today with another best of video. And in this series, we're having a look at the best apps that you can install on your brand new Linux desktop. Because as you know, all our serial distro hoppers, we're always putting our new favorite apps on our favorite Linux desktops. So today we are having a look at the best audio editor. So the best audio editing apps. Some of us, this might be a bit of a niche and some of these app categories are a little bit of a niche, but if you do creative stuff and you record audio, or even if you record music or other things, you wanna be able to edit and tinker with that audio. But while you think this one might be a lay down the there, you'd be surprised as to what audio editors are out there for the Linux desktop. Stick around, let's have a look and see what we can find. Okay, so I know some of you out there are probably have more experience with the audio editing side of things than I do. So with that in mind, we're gonna start off today by having a look at the vast myriad of software that is available in terms of Linux audio editing software. Um, and a lot of these fall into different categories. I guess unlike some other software categories, audio, audio tools, audio editors, audio players are something that Linux has never really had a shortage of. We've already covered a lot of audio players, but what I'm wanting to look at today is the audio recording and also the, I guess the, the digital audio workstations and that sort of idea. So the two categories that I'm really gonna be focusing on are gonna be options for digital audio workstations um, and also audio editors and recorders. Now, the different, main difference between these two is that a lot of the digital audio workstations have a lot more tools built in for people that wanna compose music, for people that want to work with MIDI and plugins and um, have a bit of a home studio set up versus audio editors, which are very much just simple audio tools to edit a single track or maybe multiple tracks of uh, pre-recorded audio. Or if they wanna record audio, um, that's uh, you know a relatively simple track. So with that in mind, we're gonna start out today by looking at one of the most beastly digital audio workstations, and that is Ardour. Now, unfortunately, it is gonna be really hard to name a best winner in this particular episode, because just because of the fact there are so many different tools for so many different jobs. And it's very hard to compare apples with apples here because they all have their strengths. So what I'm gonna focus on is really quickly try and give you an idea of what each of their strengths are and which ones you might want to check out if you are into any of these particular areas. So, Ardour. Uh, this particular audio, digital audio workstation has a lot of respect in the, uh, in the industry for having a very complete feature set when it comes to audio editing, MIDI editing, um, composing, track manipulation, you name it, this has a lot going for it. Uh, in terms of a feature set, I really couldn't even start to tell you what this is capable of doing. So again, I thought it would be a good idea to have a look at the Ardour website to give you an idea of what this thing is capable of. So first of all, Ardour breaks it down into the ability to record things, the, the, ability, the ability to edit and mix. Um, so again, for those of you who know what you're looking for in audio editors, you're gonna recognize some of this stuff. I guess Ardour more focuses on raw recording with an actual microphone setup and taking audio directly into it for manipulation, as opposed to another option that we're gonna be looking at, which is the uh, which is LMMS, which focuses a lot more on MIDI. So while Ardua can do MIDI inputs and uh, and it can do a lot of editing and I guess piano roll style stuff like that you would see in FL Studio, uh, it, most of it is centered around uh, direct input audio, whether it's from a USB mic or an XLR inputs. Um, and as you can see, when it comes to the editing side of things, when it comes to physically moving that audio around, you have pretty much unlimited undo redo, which is really helpful, as well as then when it comes to mixing, you have all of the, I guess most of the tools that you would want to see there. Um, it does support a lot of different hardware plugins as well. So, uh, so a lot of audio engineers love it from the point of view that it can talk with a lot of hardware. Um, and also obviously you've got a lot of support there for plugins. Uh, including, you know, a lot of the a lot of the popular ones that um, you'll see on a lot of open source software, Audio Unit LV2, Linux VST, and the LADSPA formats. Now, if none of this is making sense to you at this point, all you really need to know is that Ardour is pretty much the biggest digital audio workstation with the most capability. 
Um, and I, I feel like this seems to be the story across the board um, from the places that I've looked into. What you can achieve with Ardua is very, very impressive for free software and, um, and a lot of people have a lot of respect for what Ardua does. So next let's move on to one that's a little more closer to home and a little bit more accessible for the everyday user and that would be LMMS or Linux Multimedia Studio I think is what it's called. Um, so this guy is a little bit more like your FL Studio sort of things. It's a lot more geared towards the, uh, it's a lot more geared towards the, I guess the MIDI side of things, uh, creating your own music, uh, using the computer and whatever MIDI plugins you might have uh, or MIDI um, controllers that you might have, whether it's a launch pad or a keyboard or something like that. So these are all things that, again, I'm not the best person to talk to when it comes to getting uh, this software to do what you want it to do. But if you are looking for an FL Studio alternative or an audio tool that you can use to create music from scratch, uh, LMMS is the one to look into and there are plenty of tutorials online as to how best to go about doing that. Again, having a look at their website, you can see that once we load it up here, it's pretty sparse in terms of information, but some of the examples that they have of, uh, of some of the music that, have been, that has been produced uh, using LMMS is actually pretty impressive. They've got a bunch of different tracks here um, that have all been produced using LMMS. So again, if you're into making music with your computer and you want to start making some of your own beats, then uh, yeah, LMMS is the one to go for. Now, in terms of my personal, uh, my personal favorite, and I guess if we were going to get close to a winner, this would be the one. Um, this one is probably one of the longest and oldest uh, representations of open source software, Audacity. Um, I use Audacity an awful lot. When it comes to simple recording of multiple tracks, uh, manipulating that audio on a fairly fundamental level, but again, you get a lot of effects here um, built into it and you can add more to it obviously through through different plugins etc but it really just covers all of the tool set that you would want to see in an audio editor um, a lot of professionals use audacity to fill a lot of gaps that other programs might not have and the fact that it's available on every platform on the planet uh, makes it even more attractive so audacity has a feature set that is very rich uh, and it has a very long heritage of providing a fantastic audio recording experience um, and as you can see it's still being actively developed um, and it's I guess one of the flagship open source software that is available. The website leaves a little bit to be desired um, but yeah it can really accomplish a lot um, and I guess if we were going to get close to the winner of an open source um, the winner of a free Linux audio editor, this would probably be the one that would get the cake. Finally, I'm going to throw one more option into the mix, um, one that I only found recently, mind you, and that is Qtractor. Uh, it's got a very similar feature set in many ways to, to what Ardua tries to set out, but I think um, it, the interface from what I've heard isn't as intuitive, even though it is simpler, um, and it doesn't quite have the same feature set. Uh, it's a little bit more simplified. So think of this as a slightly more trimmed down version of Ardua. You still have a lot of track manipulation, you still have patching, and you still have a lot of MIDI manipulation as well as live recording manipulation. Um, but again, it just seems to kind of fall in that middle ground between the absolute beast that Ardua is versus something a bit simpler like Audacity. It kind of treads that middle ground in there. So Qtractor might be one worth looking out for, but uh, I think in many ways, a lot of the a lot of the needs that most people have when it comes to audio software are going to be filled using Audacity or Ardua or even LMMS. And between the three of those, uh, you can definitely become an audio editing powerhouse. So, what did you think about the best audio editors? Let me know what your pick is in the comments below because as I've told you before, these are all based on my opinions and experience, so your mileage is going to vary. But let me know what you think about the audio editors in the comments section below. As always, you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter and Google+, Twitter being the preferable one there, uh, to find out what I'm doing and I will post content to those uh, when new best of videos are released. But here on YouTube, if you do want to follow me, definitely hit that subscribe button and you'll get the new best of videos when they come out to your inbox. Of course, go crazy on that like button if you like what you see here. And as always, you can see the other best of videos in the playlist linked in the description. Thank you all for watching and I'll catch you in the very next video. Peace out, ladies and gentlemen.